Good morning, Redskins sports fans. This is John Cannon. We are here with head football coach Ramiro Leal. Coach, the Battle of the Reservation. The Battle of this the Reservation. This Friday, homecoming. I don't know what else is it's, going it's on. It's parents' night. It won't be homecoming for oh, us, but it'll parents be night. parents' night for us. Yes. Okay. So, wow, a little bit of everything going on. Talk about the Battle of the Reservation and the history of it. I mean, this has been something that since Donna North has come in, has been a tradition and... and it's a friendly little rivalry between uh, between the well, like town. A, like every the town that has multiple schools, the inner city rivalries. You know, it's a big thing. It's battling rights for one year. It's basically what it comes down to. You get to brag for one year if you win, or you know. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be. I think the fifth time we played them. Uh, you know, we've been lucky. We would be able to come on top on that. But you know, uh, Don North is a good team this year, and we're looking to be a battle. Any time you have the records, don't even count when you play inner city games like this. So it doesn't make a difference what our records are. It's going to be a good game. Well, I think one thing about it too, besides the rivalry, playoff hopes stay alive in this contest. Yeah, uh, you know, every but I tell the kids, you take one game at a time. You know, every game counts. Every game is a win, and every game is a loss. And you know, they all add up at the very end. And hopefully, you can have more wins and losses, and they have a chance to make the playoffs. Yes, technically, we're still in the playoff hunt if we keep on winning out. Uh, but we take one game at a time. You know, we got to look at the big picture right now. We're just worried about down the north and see where it takes us. And next week, we're worried about the next team. This past weekend, you got a huge piece back on your offense, which was much needed. EJ came in and did what pretty much we expected him to do. How right. big was hit, hit was it for him to come back? And especially right now at the right time when, you, when you're ravaged by injuries. Um, with your quarterback and, and also at the running back position when he went down? Well, I think that, you know, uh, that was a big blow. You know, Valley View, we lost EJ, and we had big expectations for him. Two-way starter, uh, three years in the varsity. Uh, he just brought a different dimension to the offense. You know, uh, uh, our backs, Bowen, uh, had been doing a really good job. It's nothing taken away with him, but he's a senior, senior leadership, you know, brings a little bit more to the table in that, in that aspect and the character aspect of, you know, taking charge of certain situations. Uh, and, you know, he, he did what we thought we could do. We always knew he could do that. You know, he had about 140 yards of rushing, and him and Bowen, you know, alternated back and forth. We ended up having 300, 300 plus yards of, of rushing, which I haven't had all year. I just think it just, it just brings something a little bit different to the table. What about your defense? It seems like they have kind of lost their luster a little bit, but this weekend, they brought that red skin defense. Uh, our our defense is, is stellar. That's what's kept us in ball games all year long. You know, <laughs> if it wouldn't be for them, we wouldn't have a chance, you know, to keep it close the whole year. Every game we've played in, you know, uh, with exception maybe a Mercedes game, we, you know, they've been close. They've been real close in the halftime, and they've been close going to the third quarter and fourth quarter, and they've kept us in there. I think the biggest thing is their offense is sputtered, you know. Of course, you have 10 underclassmen on there. It's, it's a little hard, you know. The only thing we can get better is with time and experience, and, you know, the, the more we play, the better we get. And when you bring EJ back into the equation, it just makes us a better offense. I think, oh, I'm sorry. No, I just said, you know, I think that, you know, it's everything's starting to gel. Well, we thought we would have gelled a little bit earlier, but I think now we're gelling a little bit later. But it's not where we started, it's where we're going to finish. I think this weekend the turf is going to be severely torn up, no pun intended, because both of y'all love to run the football. Yes. There could it be, could be a very quick game. Yeah, it, it, that's what I was going to say. This could be a very, very quick game. Donna North possesses some great backs. Y'all got some great backs. Donald North has some really, you I think know, it's they, they got some good athletes. To, uh, what, what would you say? Execution and. and I think it's going to come at least amount of penalties. For my thing about it, it's going to come on turnovers, penalties, and of course, uh, you know, ball placement. I, I think that, you know, field position is going to be a big thing with special teams and so forth. I think the intangible is going to come in. If whoever makes the most mistakes is probably going to end up the short end of, uh, of the game. I think neither one of us can afford to come overcome big obstacles in certain situations because we're very similar alike. We run the ball, uh, it's ball control. Uh, you know, we pass here and there, but just to keep everybody honest, but it's a ball control type offense. So I think that, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You know, it's going to be a situational type game. Whoever makes the, the least mistakes will probably come on top. Do you think that your defense, again, Tony and, and Juan are, are excellent running backs over there. They've done a great job. But do you think your defense has the advantage coming in due to the fact that you guys run the ball? So they're familiar with, with, with a run style offense. Well, I mean, I think advantages, like I told you, when it comes to games like this, I, I think that you can throw whatever you have in there. You know, uh, the, the excitement will be high, the motivation will be high, you know. Uh, they're going to be ready to play us, you know that. Uh, and, you know, we're ready to play them. I think it's going to come down again, execution is going to be a big deal. They have some really good athletes from both sides of the ball, and we just can't afford to be making mistakes because it's going to be a long night if we start making mistakes back and forth. What about home field advantage? Because technically you're the home team, <laughs> but it kind of seems like there's no home field advantage because – Donna North's on one side, you guys are on one side, you share the stadium, so uh, does that seem a little bit kind of weird that, that even though you're the home team in a way, you're not the home team, you know what I mean? Honestly, I don't, I don't think it's, it's a pro or con. We still, it, we still use the same type of, of uh, you know, the locker room's one side or the other. It's, it's, I, I don't see it as a big advantage, give or take. The only advantage I think I've always said is that we get to practice in the stadium every day, so I think mentally 
you know, that gives you a mental ma advantage. But I think an advantage as far as, you know, schematics, I, I don't really per se so. But uh, uh, one side or the other, you know, we're both from Donna. So, you know, the, the res the Bainley Prats, both our stadiums. So uh, either way, home or visitor, it's home to both of us. Last question, coming off this, this big win this weekend, first one in district play, how amped up are the kids, and is that going to give them extra motivation coming to this game this time morning? I think any team after a win is going to be motivated. Practice is a little bit better. You know, it's really hard to continue to keep on through the grind if you're not successful, you're not winning uh, in any sport. You know, it's hard to keep on believing what you're doing is the right thing to do when you're not getting success at what you're doing. So it creates some doubt sometimes. I think, of course, when you win, you know, it solidifies that what you're doing is the correct thing that you're doing. And I think that we just, you know, this week we executed. For the first time, everything that we needed to get done was getting done, and we were executing, and we were making careless mistakes. And I think that finally, like I said, it's starting to gel together. We just got to keep it going. There you go. Well, Coach, I know we're looking forward to We're going to be going live at that game. Battle of the Resurrection Part 6? I think Is it's 6. Correct? It should be 6. I think it's Part 6. I'm six, like, five, five. Six, whatever. It's one of those numbers. One of those numbers. We're going to get it right by Friday, but I know we're ready. I know you're ready, Coach. So um, what can the fans expect to see Friday night? It should be a great, uh, a great ball game, you know, you know, two inner city game, you know, an inner city game. And I think you can have, you know, uh, all the kids in Donna competing. You have a lot of big crowd. And I think you're going to be a, um, a very exciting, hard-hitting game. There you go. Thanks a lot, Coach. We Thank wish you the best of luck. Thank you.